Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 17074. This build includes a number of new features and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 17063. So it's been a little while and that's because of the holidays but we're back with this build which is packing a few noteworthy changes. So diving straight in, the first noteworthy changes are within Microsoft Edge. In this build, the hub area has been redesigned and looks far better in my opinion. As you can see here, the new books area now gives you suggestions for books that you can read in the Microsoft Store. Uh, the favorites area here has a lot more room to show the names of your bookmarks. Same goes for reading list, history and downloads as well. And you can also minimize this sort of sidebar here if you just prefer the icons. But by default, it's... It's unminimized like this. So yes, as I said, Microsoft Edge now showcases books that you can buy in the Windows Store. If we click on one here, it'll take us straight to the Microsoft Store where we can buy it or preview the book. In this case, we're gonna preview The Tribe of Mentors where we can now take a look at the brand new reading experience. So yes, in this build, the EPUB book reading experience has been updated as well. It has a brand new user interface, including a full screen mode, which is something many have been asking for. And up on the far left here, we have a table of contents, which we can scroll between and click on people or chapters and stuff. Uh, then we've got notes. So if you're reading a book, you can take notes whilst reading and then you can re revise your notes here in this area. There's also a search function, so you can search for specific things. You can also change the theme and size of text and stuff. There's also read aloud mode. Grammar tools, which is very interesting. So this will allow you to use grammar tools, I guess, whilst reading, which will help you improve your reading and writing skills, which is fantastic. That is currently downloading. Then there's a save function, bookmark function. So as you see here, I've bookmarked the Terry Crews chapter, which I can skip straight to now. Then down at the bottom here, we've got this sort of scrub UI, which allows you to scrub between all the pages within the book instead of having to manually find a page. Has this downloaded? It has not. So that's probably going to take a little while. Uh, let's uh, move on to our next noteworthy change. The next noteworthy change is with Immersive Reader Couldn't Install. Okay. Oh, it's downloading again, 90%. There it is. Okay, let's launch it. Immersive Reader, Microsoft Learning Tools are free tools that implement proven technologies to improve reading and writing for people regardless of their age or ability. How fantastic. That's really nice. Can we... Okay, what does it do? Can we go forwards? No? I'm going to guess that's because we have to do it in this UI. Yes, okay, so now we have a bunch of options in here. Split words into syllables. We can also highlight parts of speech, for example. That's really nice. So if this is something that will benefit you, it's now built into Microsoft Edge, which is fantastic. Now, another note where they change in this build, if we go to the hamburger menu here, or the ellipsis menu, whatever you want to call it, it's now optimized for mouse users. So in the past, if you tapped on this UI, it would give you a menu that looked a little bit like this, which if you can't tell the difference, the menu here is much bigger. And that's because this menu is optimized for touch users. Touch users need bigger targets to hit because the finger isn't as precise as the mouse. However, now if you're using a mouse, it gives you a smaller menu, which means less mouse travel, which is great for everybody. So that's one minor change. And also the developer tools option here now stacks vertically instead of horizontally or separately, which I think it did before, uh, which is something developers have been asking for, which is now here in this build. Apart from that, uh, all the other changes are sort of minor and under the hood. There are lots of improvements to Microsoft Edge in this build, including stability and performance improvements. So if you're somebody who's been a bit wary of using Edge because you you in the past you found it to be a bit laggy or buggy or just broken try it again because they have improved it a fair bit since uh, the last few builds now moving right along the next noteworthy changes are with cortana or less cortana and more quiet hours so quiet hours has been sort of redone in this build it's got a whole bunch of new features now uh, which make it useful in the past it was it simply acted as an on-off switch it's also got its own area here in settings but now you can customize it to your liking so if we full screen this here you'll see that there's now an off by default but then we've got priority only which we can customize the list so in priority mode um only some apps will showcase notifications in quiet hours. So for example, you may have the messages app or Twitter ha having being allowed in through quiet hours or maybe not, depending on who you are. So you can have calls, texts and reminders. Cortana can tell you on this device when you miss a phone call, text or message from your favorite app. This requires the Cortana app linked to your phone and does not support iOS. That's because 
iOS is locked down and Android isn't. So if you have an Android device, you can actually take advantage of these priority list stuff, which is fantastic. So we can, by default, it shows incoming VoIP calls and calls from a linked phone, show incoming text from a linked phone and show reminders regardless of app use. And that's when in quiet hours. So this is the priority mode. Then there's also an alarms mode, which hides everything. So if you really want no distractions, you can do alarms only and that will only showcase alarms. And most people usually don't set up alarms on their phone. Uh, on their device, sorry, on their laptops, PCs and stuff. So that's that's generally a just do not show any notifications button, which is very nice. And then below that, there's automatic rules. You can have quiet hours come on at certain times during the day. This is customizable. So if you come in here, you can change the day and the time to whatever it is you want it to be changed to. And if we scroll down a bit further, you can see that by default, uh, quiet hours will come on when you're duplicating a display or when you're playing a game, which is very nice. And there's also a um, proximity based one, which works when you're at home apparently which is interesting let cortana know your address she can minimize interruptions when you get home so interesting so if this if you're using a work computer for example and you work on that computer at home as well uh, you can make it so when you are at home windows will not show you any notifications so if you're done for the day you don't want to deal with work anymore you can make it so cortana keeps notifications away from you which is very nice so yes quiet hours far more uh, configurable now which is very nice and also i believe if we right click here yeah, the turn on quiet hours option has gone from this right click menu, but it is in quick actions, as you can see here. So we can just turn it on priority only, alarms only, or off, which is very nice. Now, moving on to the start menu, you can now right click this sort of hamburger menu area here and select personalize this list, which jumps you straight into the area which allows you to choose which folders appear on start. Now, by default, Microsoft is changing it so if users are upgrading from Windows 7 or Windows 8, uh, the documents and pictures. Um, Folders appear on start by default here. But if you're clean installing Windows 10, I believe they won't show up there. But you can still add them like I just did. I usually put File Explorer on because File Explorer is one that you access quite regularly. So it's nice to show up in the hamburger menu there, which is nice indeed. Now there's a whole bunch of other changes in settings. They've added more stuff into the sound area here, which is nice. Microsoft is slowly pulling everything out of the old control panel, which I believe is still here. Let's. Yeah, see the old Windows control panel is still accessible in this build of Windows, but slowly they are moving things from this into the modern settings app, which makes sense because Microsoft is, you know, moving Windows into a more modern era and trying to step away from the old legacy stuff. And the control panel is a legacy element of Windows. So yes, it's nice to see more and more of the control panel elements in settings. So there you have it guys, that's about it for this build. Thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.